Hello, welcome to Ruckasaurus Wex, the channel where we devote our attention to all things dinosaur and other prehistoric animals. And uh, we're kicking off, this is uh, our first offering, our first video, and to uh, as an introductory video, we will be uh, looking at uh, PNSO, and in this regard, the theropods. This is the march of the theropods. So, as uh, you can see here, I've got uh, 10 such critters lined up. There are a couple more that are uh, off screen, and uh, what we're going to do here today is uh, kind of sort of like playing catch up in the way of uh, many of these uh, figures uh, have already been out. All of these figures, as a matter of fact, have been uh, released in uh, the last couple years. And um, I do have new new product to review, but I figured there to play catch up. Uh, I'll do this because uh, when I do begin reviewing the new product in earnest, I, I'm going to be doing comparisons and um, I just figured it's pretty nice for you guys to know what uh, I already have and what will be compared to the new stuff. So uh, we're going to uh, start with the guys on our right side and then work our way up to uh, the Tyrannosaurus. So uh, let's do that without further ado. First up is the PNSO Allosaurus, uh, nicknamed Paul the Allosaurus. And uh, some uh, things of note is uh, this model is uh, 10 inches long and about 4 inches tall. It's uh, rated at the 135 scale and with those measurements that puts it uh, kind of sort of smack dab in there. Allosaurus was uh, said to be between 28 and 32 feet and the 10 inch measurement puts uh, this model right around 29 feet if it were living at the uh, 135 scale. So. Uh, some other things about Allosaurus, it was in the uh, late Jurassic, about 155 to 145 million years ago, and uh, part of the Morrison Formation, lived alongside uh, animals such as Stegosaurus, uh, Apatosaurus, Brontosaurus, Camarasaurus, and uh, those last three I mentioned were all sauropods, which uh, is my way of segueing into uh, many, many fossils, skeletons of Allosaurus have been found. Probably the most common theropod skeletons, if not dinosaur skeletons, period. Plenty of them. I think it's safe to say with all of those big guys running around, all those sauropods and uh, Allosaurus, they, 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 Allosaurus were considered large theropods, large carnivores at, uh, we'll just cut it right down the middle and say 30 feet and uh, but still you know that's nothing compared to 60 and 70 foot uh, animals that weigh weighed uh, 20 30 or more tons so uh, you know an also weighed about 1.52 tons so you know there there needed to be a lot of them to take down these critters and uh, even that would be hard pressed if you're talking about full-grown sauropods I'm sure what they did was try to isolate the juvies because they're easier to kill, easier to take down. But um, yeah, they're, uh, they're, uh, they were very, very common back in the late Jurassic. Uh, as far as theropods go, it was considered uh, a carnosaur and uh, had a few uh, other relatives that were uh, either considered relatives or actual allosaurs themselves. They're still debating that you've got uh, you've got a critter called uh, Sorophaganax. That is a cool name. Uh, that was much larger, but they think it was the, they they. It's either its own separate species or it's a a, a larger Allosaurus. Uh, they still that's still up up for debate. Back in the day, Allosaurus was also was uh, once known as uh, went by the name Antrodemus, another cool name. But then as things happened in the paleontological world it went back to being called Allosaurus but anyway with the, talking about our PNSO model here 
as is typical with the theropods he has an articulated jaw and uh, you gotta love the the pain apps there got the nice blue eyes going down you can see uh, the color I'm not going to spend too long on them because I've got a lot of uh, critters to go through so this is like I said just to uh, play catch up you see the how the color changes with the tail that's pretty cool and uh, yeah there you have it on the other side stand him up will you stand up uh, they, they tend to warp especially in the summertime when it gets uh, pretty warm but then that's why PNSO includes the stands so it can actually help so there you have it move him a little bit more this way and uh, yeah so that's uh, that's Paul the Allosaurus next up is Connor the Torbosaurus also of the Jurassic period also from the Morrison formation it actually shared habitat with Allosaurus for a time it actually was around before Allosaurus as it uh, its its fossils have been linked to be from about uh, 168 million to 148 million years ago somewhere there therein and uh, so um, it came before uh, Allosaurus and went extinct while Allosaurus was still around it was uh, initially said to be uh, larger much larger than Allosaurus they were estimating Torbosaurus to be about 36 feet long but that's been since revised and they've got him at about a max of 33 so he's still bigger than um, Allosaurus but uh, not as large and uh, just to uh, have some comparison we've got Allosaurus right here again we just got through reviewing and uh, if you look at uh, they're pretty much in scale when you think about it they're uh, they're probably the same size more or less if you were to stretch Allosaurus out and uh, as far as uh, our guy Torvosaurus here it's the same thing he's got uh, the articulated jaw which goes down pretty wide as you can see there and uh, you see his color scheme pretty nice you could see he's a little bit more robust than Allosaurus was uh, and he did he actually weighed about three three and a half tons to four tons so he he was definitely uh, more solidly built than Allosaurus were that's for sure as far as uh, his uh, let's see if I can get him to stand once again why we've got these uh, PNSO comes with these stands to help out and even then let's see what we got here that will have to do don't have all of them in there but he's standing so uh, anyway as I was about to say I was going to uh, speak on Tophosaurus uh, length Connor measures in at 11 and a half inches front to back snoop to tail tip and about three and a half inches tall with those measurements and going by the 135 scale that puts him right at 135 he's uh, he would be uh, 33 feet if he was alive so uh, yeah and he's supposed to be a little bit bigger than Allosaurus so that's that's pretty accurate next up we have another Jurassic theropod only now we're uh, jumping continents this is from China I'm not even going to try to pronounce some of the provinces that it was found in but this is Dayong the Yangchuanosaurus and uh, it was another large theropod dinosaur it was uh, uh, of the uh, Metria Canthosaurus family uh, I forgot to mention that um, Torvosaurus is uh, considered a megalosaur um, so different you could see some similarities 
with uh, Allosaurus yet again. I'll bring him out so we can at least see those differences or similarities. And there you have it. He was also, uh, on average, larger than Allosaurus. Estimated up to 35 feet long. It was uh, once thought to be large, about 36. And uh, so uh, this particular model measures 11 inches from snout to tail and almost 4 inches uh, standing up. So uh, with um, those uh, measurements, it uh, scales at about, uh, we'll say about 32 feet, something like that. So it's in there. It's in and around the uh, 135 scale, not quite, but close enough that you can uh, definitely fudge it. Uh, as I said, he was uh, located in China, uh, about 167 to 153 or something like that million years ago. So uh, basically late, uh, middle to late Cretaceous. This guy um, is part of uh, PNSO's museum line of, of figures. They have a couple line, different lines. They've got museum lines, which are a little bit more expensive, and they may come with something extra. At least back in the day, they came with bases. That's this right here, so you can see his base. Looks really nice, and this model actually uh, came with uh, two dinosaurs um, with it. He's got a peg there for you to uh, place his his foot on. If he'll actually go, I think he's supposed to go this way. Oh, no, I was right the other way. He does go the other way, so let's get him in there. And I'm gonna have to wiggle him in a little bit to get that foot in there. But it'll get in there, and uh, he's got a footprint for his left hind leg and yes he um, as I stated he shares this base with uh, another dinosaur one that he was preying upon he also has articulated jaw as you can see and uh, he shares the base with uh, Chunkingosaurus he also shared his habitat with uh, Momentosaurus which is a sauropod and uh, we'll get to uh, those two uh, guys some other time but uh, yeah this is uh, De Jong, the Antronosaurus. Next up we have our first Cretaceous theropod this is Carcharodontosaurus which stands for uh, shark tooth lizard and uh, this uh, this creature was a straight up beast it was located in northern Africa late Cretaceous time and it was uh, estimated to be even larger than a Tyrannosaurus Rex. They got the size estimates. Uh, the size estimates would be uh, between 39 and 45 feet long. So that definitely puts it uh, on the high end, two to three feet longer than the largest known Tyrannosaurus Rex, which would be Scotty uh, at, uh, I believe, almost 43 feet long. But uh, anyhow, this uh, this uh, model is um, the measurements are 11 and a half inches long, about four inches tall. So uh, that would actually scale to about 33 and a half feet long. So that is one thing that's totally noticeable about this uh, model is that um, he's definitely uh, small for a car. Dontosaurus. Um, once again, using our, our guy uh, Paul as a comparison, we can see right here, put him in front and get an idea there that, uh, yeah, that uh, this guy isn't much bigger than Paul. So um, I remember uh, when I uh, got him and I had noted how small he was. That, uh, that just didn't sit well with me. Um, he should be at least as large as their Tyrannosaur models, and he isn't. So, um, like I said, that didn't sit well with me. So I ended up getting a, uh, 
uh, the GR Toys version of him, which is uh, definitely more accurate in, uh, in, in scale with uh, 135. And uh, I'll uh, I'll do a review on him one day. But for now, we've got our boy here, the Carcharodontosaurus, who goes by the name of uh, Gamba, G-A-M-B-A, and uh, he wasn't going to stand on his own, so I had to use the uh, the uh, supplied stand, but. Uh, as, as with all the theropods, he can, uh, he's got an articulated jaw, and you can see uh, how nice that looks. Turn him to the other side. Looking real nice there. And uh, his, uh, his paint scheme is uh, kind of similar. Once again, bringing Paul out, he's our go-to. In the color scheme, you see there's some great similarities there. But, uh, yeah, this is, uh, will you stand up for me? Yep, there you go. This is our guy, Gamba. Definitely looks uh, pretty accurate to a Cardonosaurus. It's just that he's uh, he's a little bit too small. He has to sub in as a uh, sub-adult in my collection. Next up, keeping it right with uh, our African uh, dinos. Uh, like Carcharodontosaurus. This is Spinosaurus aegypticus. Yes, indeed. Uh, uh, to be uh, more specific, this is a juvenile representation of uh, Spinosaurus or probably, uh, uh, yeah, it would have to be juvenile. It's uh, the, the, uh, the measurements for uh, this critter are about um, the way how it's posed. It was like nine and a half or nine inches, something like that. But um, I managed to uh, figure out uh, the uh, length of the head to where the neck turns, as well as the curvature of the tail, to give it at about 11 and a half. And at the top of the uh, spine, about four uh, and um, about four and a quarter inches tall. So those measurements put it at about 33 feet in terms of scale, 135 uh, fifth scale. So, uh, yeah, that would make this a uh, pretty young spino. Spinosaurs were known, um, new estimates, the estimates were all over the place originally, uh, went all the way up to about 59 feet, which is absolutely astoundingly huge, but they've more, um, they've refined those, those measurements to, he's about uh, 49 to 52 feet, which is still pretty doggone big. The largest uh, terrestrial carnivore uh, that we know of, um, and it was more than likely um, Pescavorian fish eater and uh, yeah but uh, this uh, model's uh, nickname is Essien the Spino and this is the second iteration PNSO actually put out a uh, a museum line version which was uh, huge uh, pretty green and um, uh, that was uh, in their early uh, days and uh, ever since then the Spinosaurus has been um, reimagined into kind of like what you see here. So that's why I'm not even uh, showing that guy. Uh, I did want to get a uh, Spinosaurus that was uh, in scale with adult theropods. So um, I once again turned to GR Toys. Uh, that Spinosaurus looks uh, very similar to this one in terms of the design, but uh, on a larger scale. I think that one's like maybe 15 inches long, which would be just right uh, for the 135th scale, but uh, I digress on that. We're talking about SCN here, the PNSO Spinosaurus, the Juvie Spino, and taking a look at this guy, you could see uh, they uh, they uh, creatively uh, gave him a uh, four-legged stance because uh, it was kind of sort of thought that that's how uh, Spino ended up walking at least some of the time because they, you see the sh how short the hind limbs are, which is very unique for a theropod to uh, have uh, short hind legs like that. The coloration is cool. You see they made the head turn like he's actually looking back or looking around. Essien also comes with a uh, an articulated jaw, as you can see there. Looking at the other side, you can see he's got the, 
this is um, how they've imagined Spinosaurus tails to be now. You see, they were originally made to look like they were crocodilian, but they, uh, they've concluded that it was more flat-like, which makes it easier uh, to navigate swimming. And they, it, he was an aquatic uh, uh, predator. He lived uh, a, a semi-aquatic life, as you can see, looking pretty cool. And because he's uh, four-legged right now, he does not require a stand. So there we have, turning him this way so you can see him. As he says goodbye to you, we're talking about Essien v. Spinosaurus. Next up, we have Lucas, the Giganotosaurus. This was uh, also a, um, a museum line model. As you can see, he comes with a stand. And uh, because of the pose, he, uh, he can probably stand on his own, but um, you know, I didn't want to risk it, but I'll take him off so you can at least see the base, which is very cool. You see it's got uh, some uh, skeletal remains there. The, uh, it looks like it's dried mud, cracked up and stuff, so it's pretty cool. Looking at the edges, it looks like it's a rock type of summit there. You've got some green foliage in there, along there, so it's pretty nice. Very nice base. As far as uh, Lucas himself, let's see, can he stand on his own? He probably could. He probably warped up a little bit, but... Yeah, there he is. He wants to go over. So, but yeah, you can see right there for yourself. But uh, this is, like I said, Lucas, the Giganotosaurus, articulated jaw, as they all do. And you see, look at the uh, his his uh, lower jaw uh, extends a little bit further than his upper jaw. It's pretty wide there. Very nice there. So I'm going to get him back on his uh, display stand. Let's see what we can do here. Will you? So there we go. Lucas again, looking very nice. This guy is uh, uh, Giganotosaurus are also uh, very very large carnivores. It's a Carcharodontosaurid. It's uh, closely related to uh, Carcharodontosaurus who we previously uh, checked out a couple of dinos ago. And uh, they were around the same size. See, this, if, if uh, they made, uh, if they made um, the Carcharodontosaurus this size, I would have been satisfied. This guy is, uh, he measures uh, 15 inches and about five inches tall. Uh, with, when on the ground with the base, he's about, uh, five and a half inches tall. And uh, Carcharodontus, uh, sorry, uh, Giganotosaurus or Giganotosaurus, however you want to say it, was estimated to be about 43 feet long. And the measurements that I took uh, at the 135 scale puts this guy at, uh, he'd be 43 and, and uh, three quarter feet long, which is right there at the 135th scale. Now, Giganotosaurus' uh, size estimates are exactly that estimates because uh, the remains are very fragmentary. So what they've done, like if they found a, 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 a leg bone, a femur or something like that, they'd measure that size and try to determine the overall size of the creature. That's where they're getting that 43 foot estimate from, but they're not really sure. It's just assumed that. and. Uh, the similarities in the bones that they do have is what uh, led them to classify it as a uh, Carcharodontosaurid. Uh, very similar to um, to a Carcharodontosaurid. I'm going to bring old boy out here to see some of those uh, similarities there. But as you can see, this this guy is way too small when in fact he should be at the very minimum the same size as a Giganotosaurus. Um, and not small like that, but uh, like I said, that uh, serves as a, a, a sub-adult uh, for my collection. My GR Toys version is uh, basically the same size as the gig here, so um, there it is. Uh, Giganotosaurus 
they lived in Argentina and it's theorized that as large as they were they hunted in packs as well because they rolled around with some of the largest creatures to ever walk the earth the sauropods titanosaurs argentinosaurus uh we're talking about uh, a dinosaur a sauropod that grew to about 120 feet long now that's absolutely ridiculous uh, even for a 43 foot predator large mega carnivore there's no way a single uh, Giga could take down something that large so they had to have hunted in packs there were other dinosaurs other theropods that were around the same time basically late Cretaceous 99 and 97 million years ago you've got uh, another uh, theropod called Mapusaurus who I hope PNSO makes a figure of word is out that uh, PNSO has got a Suchomimus in the work so I look forward to that uh, but um, yeah it they had to hunt it in packs to be able to take down anything close to, I mean, even a juvenile Argentinosaurus was the size of a uh, an Apatosaurus at 70 feet. I mean, that's absolutely ridiculous. But, um, yeah, there we go. Lucas, the Gaetanotosaurus. Next up, keeping it right here in South America, we have Domingo, the Carnotaurus. Indeed, very beautiful colors. You... Can, uh, if any, you know anything about carnotaurs, they are uh, very strange looking uh, animals. They are uh, part of the abilisaurid family of theropods. And uh, the distinction is of course the very, very, very small, small uh, forelimbs. Their forelimbs are so small they make uh, tyrannosaurs look like they're, uh, they're, they're lanky. But uh, they're also vesicle. They could uh, swing them back. Uh, very. Uh, it looks like they're uh, dislocated where they hold them at, which is a very strange, very weird-looking creature. You see how they were built. Very long legs. It was uh, believed that they were very fast runners. And then, of course, you've got the skull. You've got those horns there where it derives its name, Taurus. Carnotaurus means meat-eating bull. It does have. Uh, articulated jaw and you see the uh, the very uh, uh, reduced snout there and uh, yeah it uh, very slender built once again it was uh, thought to be uh, a sprinter it actually walked down its prey uh, it was uh, relatively large it grew to about uh, 26 feet long They've got one skeleton which is very, very complete. So they, we know how these guys looked. So this is very, very accurate right here. The measurements I took were, uh, he's about five inches tall and nine inches long. So 135th scale, that puts him right at 26 feet. So this is definitely accurate. Of course, he comes with the PNSO stand as well. So uh, there he is um, from South America as well. He came about, uh, he was about uh, 71 to 69 million years ago. So he didn't appear until well after uh, Giganotosaurus had come and gone. So, uh, and he wasn't necessarily in the same exact area in um, South America. But uh, there you have it, Domingo, the Carnotaurus. So here we have it. We've got uh, the first round done of the... Uh, non-tyrannosaur theropods from PNSO so uh, yeah from our left going around to our right we've got the Allosaurus, the Carnotaurus, Carcarodontosaurus up top, the museum line Giganotosaurus, Torvosaurus, Juvenile Spinosaurus and Yang Chuanosaurus from China rounding us out so uh, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed uh, the little uh, synopsis there just trying to uh, play catch up and uh, that ends round one round two of course will be uh, the coming of the theropods see you then